Hey, what's going on OCNers? I'm Blue Devil. Today, we're gonna do an AIO shootout with seven different 360 millimeter AIOs. Wow, this one's a bit overdue. AIO liquid cooling. It seems to be the go-to standard for cooling a CPU, at least with higher-ended multi-core rigs. But what do you look for when you're shopping for one? Well, today, I have seven different 360 millimeter AIO CPU coolers that have entered the ever popular closed loop AIO liquid cooling ring. Which one will come out on top? Which category is the most important? Thermals, construction, noise, installation, design? Well, in a world dominated by Asetex designs, are any of them any good? Today, we're gonna find out. So today, we're gonna investigate which of these seven 360 millimeter AIO CPU coolers will come out on top. Over the years, water cooling has become the standard for CPU cooling among gamers and enthusiasts alike. Some like to dabble in the fine art of making a custom loop to cool more than just the CPU, like me, and some just want to set it and forget it. And that's okay. This one's for you guys. Specifically today, seven 360mm AIOs will be put to the test in several different categories, much like the Battle of the Towers was conducted. So which seven 360mm AIOs do I have to test? Well, first up is the Aorus Liquid Cooler 360, which features a 60 by 60 millimeter circular LCD display that displays designs with custom pictures and text. This is the first of today's three AIOs that has ARGB fans. A 6th gen Azatec pump is used. Next up is the No Frills No RGB Arctic Freezer 2 360. This 360 millimeter AIO from Arctic has a small 40 millimeter fan on the CPU pump block trying to cool the CPU VRAM at the same time as the CPU itself. Also something to note that the radiator design is measured at 38 millimeters, however it might be a bit closer to 30 millimeters once the extra housing is taken into consideration. Up next is Cooler Master's Master Liquid ML360P Silver Edition. So obviously the silver color is the main pole here, but I found the integrated fan design to be quite interesting. Addressing fewer cables is always a good thing. It also happens to be the second ARGB AIO in this shootout. The IQH150i RGB Pro XT is what's representing the Corsair camp here. What's so special about this AIO? It's Corsair's integration with its IQ software. Also having their Maglev fans, which seem to do a decent job at static pressure, might just be a contender here. The newest player in the AIO game is EKWB. Sure, they had the Predator line, which didn't end well having several leaking issues, something you don't want in the AIO game. Then EKWB launched the Phoenix line, which for the most part was decent. It seems that most of the issues have been worked out, but eventually got phased out due to the increased cost. Now EKWB is back at it again with its EKAIO series that were announced at CES 2020. Having two elements of DRGB, the 120mm fans and the pump block top, this AIO is poised to be the sexiest AIO here. But EKWB is known for having really good cooling, specifically in custom water cooling. So does it live up to EK's reputation? EVGA CLC series have been out for a while now. It is also one of the most affordable AIOs here. While not being super flashy, it does still have a slight taste of RGB in the pump block top. Another interesting change from the norm is the swept fan blade design, along with a reduced housing on the fans themselves. These fans are supposed to aid in better cooling and lower noise. The EVGA CLC series mostly uses the 5th gen Asetek pump design. Last but certainly not least is Fractal Design's newest AIO, the Celsius Plus S36 Dynamic. Having been Fractal's third version of an AIO, first being the Calvin series, followed by the original Celsius, and now the Celsius Plus. Having previously been able to add additional components by opening up the closed loop to a more open one, this version nixes that. Fractal has always been about a minimalistic design, which the Celsius Plus S36 Dynamic is all about. Coming in a few different variations of which, including the company's new Prisma fans, Fractal aims to keep wiring clean and to a minimum. An Asetek 6th gen pump is used in Fractal Celsius Plus lineup. Design, aesthetics, call it whatever you want. It does make a difference in a buyer's purchase. There's also a reason why some sports cars outsell others, even though the latter might perform a fire a bit less. Sometimes it just doesn't matter to some people. The Aorus Liquid Cooler 360, pretty straight to the point name, you think? Focuses less on the radiator and more on the pump block, which is a full LED screen measuring in at 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters. The LED screen gives the end user the ability to see things like temperature, fan control, display a custom message, or even a small picture. Having one of the biggest pump block combos here, the Aorus Liquid Cooler 360 uses a 6th gen Asetek pump design. 
Now, we all know ARs is all about that ARGB, and yes, the fans are ARGB, in case you all were worried. The Arctic Freezer 2's 360 CPU pump block well, looks, well, like a race car. Plain and simple. Silver accents along the sides, 40mm VRM fan in the center, even the way the CPU block is shaped resembles a race car. Vroom vroom, as my son would say it. <laughs> Moving to the fittings, which is black nickel chrome in color, flashy tubing, which is braided with a gray stripe, I am always a little off-putting, a solid black braiding would have been a better choice. Getting to the radiator, again, two more black nickel chrome fittings, which are arranged closer together than most AIOs has me wonder about the liquid direction. The radiator itself has an EKWB vibe to it with a shrouded housing measuring externally 38 millimeters thick. The three included P12 120 millimeter fans have an aggressive blade design and really complement the radiator nicely. Also, the fan wires are all neatly arranged down one side of the tubes and connect via a single four pin PWM fan header. So Cooler Master has opted for a silver paint job on their ML360P. Alongside the DRGB fans, which are also in an all-in-one concept, having three 120mm fans, but with a single four-pin PWM fan connector, as well as a single DRGB three-pin connection for the light show. Aesthetically, this 360mm AIO has it going on. Up next is Fractal Design's newest AIO, the Celsius Plus S36 Dynamic. The S36 comes in two different flavors, one with the dynamic bearing fans with no DRGB, and the other comes with the Prisma DRGB fans. Fractal, just like its last Celsius version, was very tidy when it comes to fan cabling, having an integrated fan controller right in between the tubing on the radiator. This time the fan controller now has options for DRGB connection, so if one desires to swap out the fans on the S36 Dynamic for the DRGB fans, it could be done. The pump block design is elegantly done, having a glass panel on the top which adds some glossiness, surrounded by a matte black rubber coating on the rest of the pump. Two cables protrude out of the pump block, one for power and the other for DRGB connection. Wishing those could have been treated the same way as the fan cabling was though. For not having a digital display, the EKWB AIO's pump lock is pretty stylish with its opaque frosted look. Having taken some elements from their own product lines, another staple in EK's arsenal is the inclusion of their DRGB Vardar fans. Moving to the player with the longest history here, Corsair, with their IQ H150i RGB Pro XT, is another one for having a standard ARGB on the pump water block. Corsair has opted for a more blacked out look with some glossy elements. The Maglev fans, however, are not RGB or blacked out. Instead, they are plain old gray Maglev fans which are provided. I would have hoped RGB would have played a bigger role. The radiator is black with some chrome accents of Corsair's logo and name, which adds some brand recognition as well as some class. Unfortunately, instead of trying to minimize cabling, there is a slew of cables coming out of the pump water block. Next up in the design category is EVGA CLC360. Being the oldest 360 AIO in this shootout doesn't mean that it's not pretty to look at. The CLC360 has most boxes checked when it comes to an AIO in 2020. So the construction, it might bleed into aesthetics, but most of these AIOs have a radiator made of aluminum and a pump block made of copper and several plastics, as well as having flexible tubing that is sleeved. The AOS Liquid Cooler 360 hits all those boxes and adds the aforementioned 60 by 60 LED screen. Having the standard 25 millimeter thick radiator, cooling is about average. The fans that Aorus includes seem to be decently made, having a thicker hub to accommodate its dual ball bearing design. Moving over to the pump block, which is running Asetek 6 Gen Pump, is a bit taller than the rest of AIOs featured here. But I don't think small form factor and 360mm radiator belongs in the same sentence. Measuring in at 63mm tall, probably to accommodate the extra circuitry needed for the LED screen. Cooler Masters ML360P Silver Edition follows the same construction as the other AIOs in the shootout. Copper base plate on the pump with plastics to make up the rest of the pump top housing. Sleeve tubing with an aluminum radiator. The paint job, however, does seem to have a powder coated finish, which should resist fingerprints and scratches. Construction of the Arctic Freezer 2 360 seems to be overall pretty good. Starting off with the CPU water block, which also houses the pump and a 40 millimeter VRM fan is made primarily of plastic with the cold plate being copper. The cold plate surface was lapped to a nice finish and appeared flat. The tubing is braided and the fan cabling all run down 
the tube, which makes things really easy to keep things nice and tidy. The radiator, which is made from aluminum, seems to be quite polished. Measuring in at 38 millimeters thick and 398 millimeters long, it's a smidge longer than other 360 millimeter radiators, making some installations a tight fit. Fractals Celsius Plus S36 Dynamic is mainly made of aluminum and matte black plastic with a touch of actual glass for the top of the pump block. A copper coal plate which has a brush finish and a pump which is based on the Asetek 6th gen design. Topping things off, Fractal has opted to include three of its X2 GP12 120mm fans which have about 88 CFM of airflow each. EKWB's AIO history has long been plagued by issues. While EK seems to have had enough with trying to give its AIO construction the ability to expand the loop to other components, now a sealed design, EK looks to be better for the long haul. The pump block very closely resembles a DDC pump, but is actually an SPC pump style which is made completely in-house by EKWB. Moving over to the radiator and fans, both of which seem to be using radiators at 28 millimeters thick and their DRGB Vardar 120 millimeter fans, of which are proven performers. Maybe EK re-engineered its end of life fluid gaming line into the reimagined EK AIO line. Corsair, working in collaboration with Coolit, splits from the conventional Asetek designs of years past. The pump block design is the same dimensions as previous models, however, it gets a glossy black finish instead of gray. Having 16 addressable ARGB zones that the pump block means that there is a lot of customization with lighting to be had. EVJ CLC 360 seems to be constructed pretty much the same as all the others, however with a larger than normal pump block, which seems to completely engulf the heat plate entirely. Starting off with installation, most of these AIOs are pretty much the same to install. Unless something has changed here, let me know. The Oris Liquid Cooler 360 came with all three ARGB fans not mounted to the radiator when with the Intel mounting bracket pre-installed, with some of a circle of thermal paste. Hooking up cabling to the Aorus Liquid 360 was simple enough. Four wires on the same side as the inlet and outlet fittings on the pump block make it slightly noticeable when running wiring to the rear of the case. Once we had the motherboard tray, hooking up the 320mm ARGB fans was a 3-pin and a proprietary 3-pin ARGB connection to two of those cables that came out of the pump block. The other two cables SATA power and a USB 2.0 motherboard connection. Also something to note here is all the cables are hardwired into the pump block so you are still going to have to deal with the cabling in some way shape or form. Installation is where the Cooler Master ML360P sets itself apart from the rest. Having all three fans integrated into one cohesive unit while having only two wires to power the ARGB and the fans themselves is pretty awesome. Another two cables coming off of the pump block top to power the pump but that's where the cohesiveness stops. Cooler Master has decided to use a dedicated ARGB controller for the life of me adds a ton more cables, kind of like Corsair has with their Commander Pro. Fail sauce. Arctic Freezer 2's 360's mounting brackets, which are held on by a single screw after trying to install, I found to be a bit big and were very close, if not touching, my ASUS Z370 Maximus X Codes plastic motherboard shield. I actually had to remount three times to get a good mount. The 120mm fans on the Freezer 2 360 were pre-installed, which could have cut down on installation time had I mounted the radiator in the roof of the case, but I chose to mount them in the front of the CMTD 500 mesh. This resulted in taking off all three fans and flipping them to the other side of the radiator as I had to do with this pretty much with every AIO in this comparison. The Fractal Celsius Plus S36 Dynamic which came mostly unassembled. The Intel mounting bracket was pre-installed on the 6th gen Asetek pump block making my install a little easier. The only issue I ran into while installing the Celsius Plus S36 Dynamic was when I flipped the fans to the opposite side of the integrated fan header the fan cables didn't reach. I had to borrow the three pin fan splitter from the EK AIO to get the fans to use the integrated fan header. Moving to the EK AIO, installation went decently smooth until I had to figure out the DRGB connections. Thankfully, the DRGB Vardar fans had two connections per fan, making it possible to daisy chain them and only use a single DRGB header on my motherboard. Corsair's IQ H150i RGB Pro XT while only having 
a single ARGB element on the top of the pump block made installation pretty easy. Cable connections were the only thing that I would take another look at, since two cables came out of the top of the pump block and a single micro USB connection to control said ARGB. The EVGA CLC360 installed as just about as easy as any other AIO. The one touch that I liked everything, even the pump block was powered by a single fan header. All three fans on the CLC360 connect directly to the pump block with a single three pin plugging into the CPU fan header. The EVGA CLC360 also has a USB mini connection to manage the EVGA logo on the pump block in terms of RGB. Okay, testing mythology. All AIOs were tested in the very same way. I installed every AIO as a front air intake on the Cooling Master TD500 white mesh. Case review soon. With both side panels on, placing the EVGA P2 750 watt PSU and EVGA's RTX 2060 Super SC Ultra on either eco or zero RPM modes, ensuring no random spikes in noise. The Testbench PC consists of an Intel i7-8700K clocked at 5GHz with 1.344 vCore. The 8700K is slotted in my ASUS Z370 Maximus X code motherboard. I have 16GB of HyperAxis Fury RGB DDR4 at 3733 as well as Team Group's T-Force 500GB SSD. Thermals and noise. Thermals are what they are, but noise in some cases can be very subjective, both being interesting metrics to take into this account. The AORS Liquid Cooler 360 in terms of the idle noise was actually pretty quiet at 33dBA while maintaining a 35C idle temp. Load was a bit disappointing at 77C with a 45 dBA noise profile. Cooling Master's ML360P Silver Edition is about average in the cooling department. Idle temps hovered around 32C with a 38 dBA, while load temps soared to almost 80C. However, the fans only spin at 1800 RPM with a 44 dBA noise profile. My thoughts are if the fans spun up to about 2400 RPM, cooling would have been significantly better. The Arctic Freezer 2 360's noise profile actually was really quiet, even at load. Measuring in at 41 dBA at idle and 50 dBA at full fan speed, the P12 fans on the Arctic Freezer 2 360 really complement it nicely. Where the Arctic Freezer 2 360 really shined was temps, topping out at 28C idle and 74C load. Impressive. The Fractal Design Celsius Plus S36 Dynamic measured in at about 42 dBA at idle and at full fan speed measuring at 50 dBA matching Arctic Freezer's 2's 360 in noise. The Celsius Plus S36 did fairly average in at 32 C at idle and 69 degrees C at load. What really surprised me was the EK AIO. Temps were very much under control with a load temp of only 61 degrees Celsius. The EK AIO is the temp winner of this shootout here. But to achieve this feat, the Vardar fans had to be cranked. Doing so resulted also in the loudest at 58 dBA. So yeah, dem fans. The IQ H150i RGB Pro XT started off pretty strong. However, tapered off when things got a bit hot, like 75 degrees hot. That was with the fans running at 100% at around 2400 RPM. On the noise side, the H150i RGB Pro XT didn't get as loud as other fans in the shootout. However, those Megalith fans are not quiet by any means. The EVGA CLC360 is certainly a capable cooler, but is suffering from a dated design. Keep my 8700K at 5 GHz with temps topping out at about 70C while maintaining a 50 dBA noise profile. It's not horrible, but just about average. All right, conclusion time. Having installed seven different AIOs, all of them performing decently well. However, there are some clear winners here. EKWB has made a fantastic AIO that cools very well. It also looks amazing. On the other hand, Arctic with their Freezer 2 360 is just stupid cheap for the cooling it provides. But the one that stood out among the rest was Fractal's Celsius S36 Dynamic. The fans that come bundled with the Celsius Plus S36 Dynamic feel super premium, along with the attention to detail with the very cleverly placed fan controller. Also having a single fan header to plug in is the definition of simplicity. Okay guys, thanks for tuning in to this AIO shootout. If you haven't done so already, please toss a like and a sub. Thank you very much. Blue Devil, out.